Yeah, pass it to the pack. It's pack here. Today's video, I'm getting the GOAT of every single NBA team and I'm replacing them with their best player today on every single NBA team, right? I'm going to simulate an entire season. I want to see who would get better, who would get worse, who's going to win the championship and stuff like that. Before the video starts, please be an OG. Join the pack and subscribe and leave a like on the video because it helps the channel grow. I do videos like this all the time and it would be great if you could join up. Okay, so with the Philadelphia 76ers, I replaced Joel Embiid with Allen Iverson, right? So now they get a 95 overall to a 97 overall, but I don't necessarily think they would get better. But then again, Allen Iverson never got the talent that this 76ers team has. So it kind of, I mean, Allen Iverson was able to take a team worse than this to the finals is what I'm saying. So, I mean, they could theoretically do well, right? This, this one should be pretty cool. With the Milwaukee Bucks, we replaced Giannis with Kareem. Again, it's just another dominant player that's like does one thing very well, right? I mean, Giannis is more than just one thing well, instead of Kareem, but like players that have holes in their games that are dominant, right? That's essentially we're just trading them out at the end of the day. I don't necessarily think the Bucks get better either, right? The Bulls, though, obviously get better. No hate on DeMar DeRozan, right? I love to meet some DeMar. He was great on the Spurs. But, like, when you're replacing him with the freaking GOAT, and the GOAT gets Zach Levine, Alonzo Ball, Vooch, and Alex Caruso, imagine Michael Jordan getting a good center in his career. Kind of broken, right? And then you have a bench that's, like, actually pretty decent. I mean, Michael Jordan has won a championship with a team either as good or technically worse than this. So, Michael Jordan should be pretty damn good. And it with the Bulls, right? He should be, right? With the Cavaliers, it kind of the same thing with LeBron, right? So I replaced LeBron with Jared Allen because Jared Allen was barely better than Darius Garland. So like, let me explain to you how I kind of did this, right? So yes, Darius Garland and Jared Allen have the same rating, but if you see the little like meter on the top right, if you go left and right, it'll get smaller, even though they're the same rating, you can't see it here, but like it'll get smaller or bigger depending on the rating. So whoever had the biggest, I guess, bar, was the better player. And so Jared Allen had the bigger bar, so I replaced him with LeBron James. LeBron, with this team, you still have Kevin Love, Ricky Rubio's pretty good, Darius Garland's nasty, Evan Mobley. I mean, LeBron has made it to final teams. Like, he's dragged teams to the finals with worse rosters before. So kind of the same thing with Allen Iverson. LeBron can still do it. This is a pretty good team. With the Boston Celtics, we have Bill Russell. Now this team, I don't know if it's going to be succeeding as much just because Bill Russell, like, isn't really successful in the modern NBA, right? Like he's not versatile enough. Even though this is versatile, versatile paint piece, it's not really versatile enough in today's NBA to be able to carry this team anywhere. But I could be wrong. Now with the Clippers, Bob McAdoo replacing Kawhi. So you, 2K said that Kawhi was the Clippers' goal, but I don't know. They haven't done anything with Kawhi yet, so like you can't really say that. But again, either is Bob McAdoo, but Bob McAdoo has played way longer than Kawhi. Plus, I didn't want to just keep Kawhi on the same team, so I flipped them. And now Bob McAdoo is the best player. Technically, this team gets worse with Bob McAdoo and one of the few teams that get worse when you replace their best player, right? Now with the Memphis Grizzlies, now we have Marcus Saul. I wouldn't say this team is too different from the team that he dragged to the conference finals in his prime when he had, I guess, Zebo could be Jared Jackson. Obviously not the same player, but you could try to compare them. You could try to compare Tony Allen or Mike Conley with Desmond Bain. I guess you could try to do that, but like, at the end of the day, what I'm saying is that this team isn't like, super worse than the team that he dragged to the conference finals, right? So theoretically, theoretically, you should be able to do it, right? With the Atlanta Hawks, this is another team I think that gets worse. Even though Trey Young has a lower rating than Bob Pettit, uh, Bob Pettit, again, isn't necessarily going to do great in this today's NBA, but he was technically a three-point shooter. He could shoot threes, even though they didn't have a three-point line. That's a whole other thing, but he, had, he could shoot from distance, right? So in this sense... You could have had Dominique Wilkins, but Bob Pettit had the higher rating. Also, Bob Pettit had won a championship, you know, with the Hawks, so it kind of gives him priority. We'll see what this team can do. Without a crazy good point card, this team is probably going to struggle, so we'll see. Now, with the Miami Heat, I could have added LeBron, but obviously LeBron was already in the Cavs, and I didn't want to double LeBron up. So, Dwayne Wade, I don't think Miami Heat fans are mad saying Dwayne Wade is your best player ever. You're, you're basically just replacing Jimmy Butler, who, I mean, Wade's just a better Jimmy Butler. So, that, I mean, this team is already a contender. Now you add Dwayne Wade, and they're even more of a contender, right? With the Hornets, I don't necessarily think they get a lot better Glenn Rice replacing with LaMelo Ball. Like, sure, they maybe get a little better, but not enough to where it's going to matter. So, with the Utah Jazz, you have Carl Malone, right? So, it could have been John Stockton. I, I don't necessarily think 
one was better than the other, but like according to 2K, Carl Malone was the better player, right? So like, sure. Even though Carl, Carl Malone is a questionable dude. I don't know if 2K is even okay with him being in the game, but whatever. I mean, hey, that's not my business, right? Carl Malone, now with Donovan Mitchell is going to be scary. Yes, you lose Rudy Gobert, so you lose the defense. Well, like, now you have two dudes who can get a bucket however they want. That's kind of going to be ridiculous. They could be a contender low-key. With the Sacramento Kings, they lose De'Aaron Fox and now get Oscar Robertson. At the end of the day, Oscar Robertson will not be able to carry this team to a championship like he was able to do with the Kings back in the day. This is not going to happen, right? With the New York Knicks, Walt Frazier with the Knicks is also, I don't think, necessarily enough to get them anywhere. I think this team's pretty deep. So, like, maybe it could do something. But, like, realistically, Walt or Clyde isn't going to be able to do much with this team. Now, with the Lakers, Magic Johnson. Okay, so now you're just replacing a older LeBron James with a prime Magic Johnson. I mean, if you give Magic Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, who can at least drive. I mean, you could maybe do something with this team. I mean, uh, it, it's it's not impossible for Magic to do it. But, like, it's going to be really hard for him to win it. And then with the, the Magic itself. So there was a lot of people it could have been. It could have been Tracy McGrady. Technically it could have been Shaq. And it technically could have been um, Dwight Howard. But Penny Hardaway was the only one that, you know, was consistently a good team. Had a lot of seasons with them. And also took them to conference finals. like Or even a finals appearance, actually. So, I mean, it could have been Dwight. But Penny Hardaway had the higher rating. So, at the end of the day, though, this team is not good enough to do anything with just Penny. So, uh, it's not going to be successful enough. Now, with the Mavericks, you get Dirk replacing Luka. I, I think they kind of stay the same in terms of talent. Like, they don't get necessarily better, right? They're still just going to be good. But, poor, I mean, Dirk was able to take a team with this relative talent to win a championship. So, theoretically, they should be able to do it. With the Nets, you replace KD with Julius Irving, which is kind of nuts. Dr. J might be able to do some crazy shit with this team, especially now that Kyrie's going to be playing the whole season in this game mode. So, like... I don't know, this team has a ton of talent. This one could be pretty crazy. I think they could low-key win it. But the Nuggets, you're replacing Jokic with Anthony, uh, Carmelo Anthony. I don't necessarily think they get a lot better. So they're kind of in the same situation than before, right? Now with the Pacers, you replace Sabonis with Mel Daniels. Now before you, if some of you who don't know who Mel Daniel is, he's a brand new player added in the NBA 2K for this year. And the thing about him was that he had led the Pacers to multiple championships in the ABA, right? So that's why he's considered the Pacers' all-time best player. Obviously, there's no Reggie Miller in this game, so I couldn't add him, right? But at the end of the day, Mel Daniels knows how to win, so maybe he can take his team to a championship situation. Hopefully, right? Now, with the Pelicans, this one's crazy because now that Zion's gone, right? Zion wasn't even playing in the first place, so now that you add Chris Paul to this team, Chris Paul could do some nasty stuff with Brandon Ingram and Valanciunas with a bench that's not even that bad. He could low-key win it, right? Like, Chris Paul, we know he can do crazy stuff with this team. Now, with the Pistons, you get Isaiah Thomas, multiple NBA champion, amazing player, but this rest of this roster just isn't good enough to do anything, right? So, probably not going to change. With the Raptors, though, so there was a problem with this one. Uh, Kawhi was technically the better player, but I was unsure because... Vince Carter has more seasons with them, like a lot more seasons with them. And then plus, like, we already know how this team is with Kawhi anyways. So I felt like Vince Carter should have stayed. Uh, maybe you can disagree with me in the comments, maybe, but, like, I just feel like Vince Carter made more sense, right? With the Rockets, Hakeem. Hakeem is amazing, all-time great. He's not going to be able to do much of this roster unless Eric Gordon starts playing crazy or John Wall looks like he's playing back in his prime. They're not going to be able to do much, right? With the Spurs, I love me some Tim Duncan. I know he can carry teams. I know he makes a team change just because he's on the court, right? But if you don't have at least DeJounte, like, they're not going to be able to do anything. So, like, again, another team that I just don't think can do it with just Timmy D. Like, I just, it won't happen, right? With the Suns, this team, I'm going to say right now, is my personal pick for the championship, right? Because now that you're replacing Chris Paul with Steve Nash... Oh, let me explain why I replaced Chris Paul. So Chris Paul's already the best player on the Pelicans. I didn't want Chris Paul to also be on the Suns. So instead of trading Booker, I traded uh, Chris Paul, right? So, and it just makes it more interesting too. Now that Steve Nash has a crazy good roster on this team. Like he's already succeeded with the Suns before. But now that you have like DeAndre Ayton and Booker, like, ooh, and Bridges and Cam Johnson and JaVale McGee, like, I don't know. This team might just be the favorites to me. 
Now with the Thunder, you have KD. Now it's going to be on this team. Again, KD's fantastic, but the rest of this team is not good enough. So like, they'll be good, but just not good enough to win a championship. With the Timberwolves, you're replacing Cat with De Kevin Garnett. Both put up similar numbers, except one was more clearly better on defense, right? I think Kevin Garnett will force them to be winners, right? He'll, he'll, he'll get everyone to try to win more, so there's that. With the Blazers, I mean, you could say that Dame was already the GOAT of the Blazers, theoretically, right? But you're replacing with Clyde, who's one of the most underrated players of all time, right? So there's that. I love Clyde. I think his team technically should be able to be decent, but, like, not enough to win a championship, I think. But they could be decent. I could be wrong. With the Warriors, so I replaced Curry. And I think Curry should be considered the GOAT of the Warriors, or you could say technically KD if you wanted to. But Wilt had the highest rating. I didn't want to just keep Curry on the same team, so we, re we replaced them with Wilt. And this team's still going to be pretty nasty. It's just that, is Wilt good enough in today's NBA to do what he used to do back then? We'll have to wait and see. And then with the Wizards, it's Wes Unseld replacing Bradley Beal. Yes, you get a great player with Wes Unseld, but like everybody else isn't good enough. So like that's going to be really weird. So some teams I think got worse. Other teams got a lot better. Let's simulate a season and see how it goes, okay? So I'm going to simulate the entire season and then we'll look at the stats and then we'll go into the playoffs, okay? Let's do it. Okay, so MVP of the regular season was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. 29 points per game, 15 rebounds, and then the crazy efficiency. Like, just remember, this dude's dominant. It's funny how, like, if we did a regular like season, Giannis would be MVP. And now we do, we flip them, and it's still Kareem as MVP. So that's, that's kind of crazy, right? Rookie of the year, Ken Cunningham. Sixth man of the year, Ben Simmons. It's funny. Defensive player of the year is Bill Russell. with getting three blocks, 1.5 steals. Most improved player was Obi Toppin. And coach of the year was Mike Booth, or Big Bud, right? So... Uh, for, well, to first team all NBA, Oscar Robinson makes first team. I was wrong about him, okay? Uh, Magic, Kevin Garnett, LeBron, and Kareem. Makes sense. Steve Nash on the second team. Dwayne Wade, Irving, Carl Malone, and Will Chamberlain. And third team, Michael Jordan. Man, Michael Jordan not making first team is kind of crazy. Penny Hardaway, Tim Duncan, Carmelo, and Bob McAdoo. With, and then we can talk about the defensive team. I don't never really care about the defensive teams. But, okay. So, let's look at a couple stuff. I want to look at the standings, right? So... We'll go from the bottom of the Western Conference. So the Thunder were the worst team in the West. Duh. When, you know, KD has no help. That's what's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to diss KD, but like, all I'm saying is he only wins championships when he has a good team. That's all I'm saying. But whatever. The Nuggets, now that have Carmelo Anthony, are not going to be able to do much because like Jokic is uh, someone who creates his team better while Melo's never been that guy. He just kind of ISO scores, right? The Mavericks get worse without Luka, which I, again, Luka's someone that gets his team better while Dirk is more just a dominant player, so I can see that. The Rockets are a bad team because at the end of the day, no matter how good Hakeem is, it doesn't matter. Same thing goes with the Spurs. No matter how good Tim Duncan was, like you, when your team's not good, you can't do it, right? But Tim Wolves make play-in game. Pelicans make play-in game, which was a surprise. The, the Grizzlies get worse, but they make play-in game. And the Kings, Oscar Robinson, dragged that team to a play-in game. And the 500 record is really surprising. So the Suns end up as a sixth seed, which is worse than what I thought they were going to be. The Clippers were low-key dirty with Bob McAdoo, which is also like really surprising. I was not expecting that. The Lakers are fantastic. The Jazz are somehow even better. The Blazers, Clyde Drexler told us to shut up, bro. Clyde kind of different. I'm telling you, like, he's the most underrated player of all time. Like, he's really good and helps the Blazers get a good uh, rating. And then the Warriors with Wilt Chamberlain are going to be broken with a crazy shooter like Clay on the team. I could see it. Now, let's talk about the Eastern Conference. So, we go to the Orlando Magic. Uh, again, at the end of the day, like, what is Penny going to be able to do with no help? Like, what are you going to do? The Hornets get worse. That was kind of expected when, like, I don't know if Glenn was going to make the team better compared to LaMelo. The, the Pistons, again, it's like, what is Isaiah Thomas going to be able to do with no one, like, no help? Walt Frazier, the same thing with no help. What are you going to do? The Raptors, I'm kind of surprised they're as bad as they were. Like, you know, adding Vince Carter, I feel like they would be a lot better, but I guess I was wrong. With the Cavs, so LeBron's able to get at least get him to the playing game. So LeBron saved his legacy there with at least getting him to the playing game, right? The Miami Heat also get in the playing game with, with uh, Dwayne Wade. The Wizards with Wes, Unhel with Wes Unseld, sorry, did actually like a lot better than expected. The 76ers with Allen Iverson going to the playing game, but with a pretty good rate, like overall like win percentage. So it's kind of weird. And then the Bulls make it straight up to the playoffs with Michael Jordan, obviously, right? The Pacers do a lot better now that they have someone that knows how to win, low-key. 
the Atlanta Hawks with Bob Pettit are kind of dominating. The Nets have an amazing record, obviously because of Julius Irving and the rest of that roster. The Celtics with Bill Russell. Bill Russell just understands how to win, and when you give him at least a little bit of help, he can win games, so that kind of makes sense to me. And then the Milwaukee Bucks are just disgusting because you're just replacing one dominant player, bro, with another dominant player. Like, it makes sense. So, no, I mean, a couple surprises here, but, like, nothing crazy, crazy. So that's okay. I see it. Now, I want to look at the stats real quick, and then we'll go into the playoffs. But we'll go to season stats, player stats. So, look, well, actually, no, the league leaders. That's what I actually want to see. So, the league leader was Kevin Durant, who got injured, right? So, that sucks. Uh, Devin Booker was still leading the NBA, even though he had all his all-time greats. Devin Booker still finds a way to be one of the best offensive players in the world. That's pretty crazy. Oscar Robinson going off all season. And then when it comes to rebounds, obviously like Kevin Garnett, Will Chamberlain, Mel Daniels was having himself a season. Playmaking, Steve Nash is averaging 14 assists a game, which is nutty. Steals with Walt Frazier with 2.6. Blocks was Hakeem with 2.9 and Bill Russell. So... Pretty, pretty crazy stuff. The most efficient player was Mitchell Robinson and was unsold. And then from the three-point uh, line was Glenn Rice with a 47% from three, which is Porcino, right? So, okay. Pretty crazy stuff. Let's simulate the playing game. Let's see who makes it, right? After the playing game, so LeBron is able to drag him into the next round of the playing game. And was unsold beats Allen Iverson to make it to the next round. So, okay. They still have to do another playing game to see who's going to play the Bucks, I believe. And then on the other side, we have the Pelicans with CP3 finding a way to beat Kevin Garnett's Timberwolves. And then the Kings beat the Grizzlies. I'm really surprised about that one. But I don't understand. The Kings win. Okay, so the Kings made the playoffs. I see. And then so then the Memphis Grizzlies had to play the Pelicans to see who goes to the playoffs. Right? Oh, no. They already simulated that as well. Why is this one not simulated? Error. Wait, what? Did you see that? Error. The Sunday series have one or more players with an unplayable injury in one of the first eight rotation spots of the global game plan. Okay, hold on. I, I probably have to fix something. I actually didn't know this was a thing. My bad, boys. Hold on. Okay, sorry. So, okay. So, LeBron beats Allen Iverson to make it into the actual, like, legit playoffs. So, LeBron finds a way. LeBron finds a way. I see you, big LeBron. Bron, Bron. And then the Grizzlies find a way as well, knocking out CP3 from the actual playoff bracket. Okay, we have some pretty interesting series right here. Uh, with, I mean, it's LeBron, maybe the greatest player of all time, versus Kareem with a good roster, who's the third greatest player of all time. So, like, if you look at it that way, like, the Bucks should win this series, just straight up. With the Atlanta Hawks with Bob Pettit versus Mel, that's going to be a really close series, but I think Bob Pettit should win that one. But the Brooklyn Nets stacked roster versus the Bulls with Michael Jordan. That one's going to be really hard for Michael Jordan, but he theoretically could pull through, but it's going to be really hard. And then with the Celtics, well, Bill Russell should be able to beat Wes Unseld's Wizards, okay? So then when we have the Warriors versus Grizzlies, Warriors should destroy them. Lakers with, with Magic versus, this is the Los Angeles rivalry with Bob McAdoo, but I think, I think Magic should be able to win this one pretty easily. The Jazz, oh, this series might be crazy. The Jazz with Carl Malone versus the Sons of Steve Nash might be a pretty close one. And then Clyde Drexler should be able to wash the Kings with nobody but Oscar Robertson. So let's see the first round. Let's see how it goes. And some pretty pretty surprising stuff. So the Bucks straight up flattened LeBron. But he doesn't get swept at least. But it's still it flattened him out. The Bob Pettit was able to barely beat the Pacers in seven games. So pretty good. So the Nets beat the Bulls. So Michael Jordan's not able to get out of the first round. That's wild. But like, and he had help. I don't know, man. Michael, jo Michael Jordan's not the, the GOAT. Not clickbait. I'm just kidding. Just at the end of the day, I mean, he didn't get gentlemen swept compared to LeBron, at least, right? But yeah, and then the Bill Russell was able to barely sweep by the seventh seed with Wes Unseld. So now we have the Celtics and the Nets. Ooh, okay, that one's gonna be pretty crazy. And then the Bucks and the Hawks. I think the Bucks should win this one pretty easily. And then the Warriors should have flattened the Grizzlies, but it went to seven games. I'm surprised at that. Magic loses. So Bob McAdoo carries the Clippers with Paul George into the second round. That's a surprise to me. The Jazz destroy the Suns. Damn, Steve Nash can't win a championship still. But then Carl Malone making it to the conference finals. And then the Kings. Dude, is Oscar Robinson the top five player all time? What is going on? He, he beats Clyde Drexler's Blazers. And that's kind of surprising. Okay, let's simulate this next round. So we have Oscar Robinson versus Carl Malone and a really good team. I think Carl Malone and Donovan Mitchell should take care of this. And then the Warriors should be able to take care of Bob McAdoo and the Clippers. But then the Bucks and the Hawks. 
Again, I think the Bucks should be able to destroy them. And then I think the Nets should be beating the Celtics here. But we'll see. Let's go. Bro. So the Warriors lose to Bob McAdoo and the Clippers. What is going on? That doesn't make any sense to me. The Jazz are able to bait the the Kings. So that means that, hey, like Carl Malone gets his chance to make it to the, like the finals again and maybe win a championship. He has a serious chance right here. He should be able to win this series. And then with the Bucks to flatten out the Hawks, obviously. And then the Celtics with Bill Russell are able to find a way into the NBA Finals. So now we have Kareem versus Bill Russell. I still think the Bucks should be able to win this one pretty easily. And I think the Jazz should be able to win this one pretty easily. So let's see. Let's go. Dude, what? The Clippers are playing out of their mind. Why are they the greatest team ever? So Bob McAdoo is just destroying the Jazz. And Karl Malone still can't find a way to win a championship. What a failure in every sense. Just joking, obviously. And then uh, the Bucks take it to seven games and beat Bill Russell Celtics. And Kareem with an amazing roster versus Bob McAdoo, which is not a bad roster, but not compared to the Bucks. This is going to be a series, bro. Let's simulate a couple games just to see how this goes because I kind of want to see the, the championship game. So game one, let's see how this goes. The Bucks should be able to win this series pretty easily, but the Clippers are right there. Man, Clippers are winning this game. Wow, Clippers win game one. Bro, let me look at the boss score real quick. Hold on. I'm very confused. So, so Drew Holiday and Kareem didn't even... I mean, they did okay. But Bob McAdoo and Zubach went crazy. Bob McAdoo is kind of taking over the NBA. So, all we're saying is that if Bob McAdoo had a good team, he would dominate the NBA. That's kind of crazy. I'm, I'm really surprised so far. Okay, that's game one. Let's go. Imagine if they swept the Bucks. That'd be nuts. They're, they're leading the game right now. They actually have a pretty good lead. Oh my god, are they really going to do this, bro? They win game two. In Milwaukee, by the way. I'm kind of scared, bro. Hold on. Are they about to sweep? They would have swept the whole playoffs, I think, too, if they do this. But no, nope. the Bucks are... Kareem's getting mad. He's starting to play a lot better, especially because against the center. Like, of course Kareem is going to play good against the center, bro. They almost lost the game, but the Clippers are able to find a way to lose barely. Because they came back, but they lost, and the Bucks win this game. Okay. Yeah, they dominated the fourth quarter, too. Kareem had himself a nice game, obviously. And then Bob McAdoo's still going off. Man, the Clippers are playing out of their mind. But still, it's not over yet. Let's go. This is game four in LA. And the Bucks are starting to kind of take over again. They're starting to show that they're the better team. But eh, it's still close. But no. Okay, so the Bucks win game two in LA. So they take back. So they both, either both teams don't have home field advantage anymore, right? Like, I mean, I guess it's like evened out now. We're going back to Milwaukee. Let's see how this goes. This this should be a Milwaukee turnaround winning the championship, but the Clippers are up early, but the Bucks are fighting it. I don't know, man. The Clippers are kind of right there. This is a really big game. It's really close. Three minutes left. A little fast forward, and the Clippers win game five. Bob McAdoo at 42. Paul George went crazy. Hardenstein went crazy. Man, the Clippers really want this. This is really surprising. So this is this is it, boys. Game six. Clippers are at home. Let's see what happens. So early start. Okay, we're going to stop in the fourth quarter to see where we're at. But the Bucks are kind of taking over again. Okay, it's kind of close. But the Clippers are right there. I don't know, dude. It's tie game. Two minutes left. Okay, we're going to stop. I don't know. Oh, I messed up the simulation. Okay, I messed up the simulation. My bad, boys. But it didn't matter. The Bucks won it. So it's going to game seven in Milwaukee. Let's see, man. Let's see. I'll stop it right this time, hopefully. Not skip the championship by accident. Um, okay, so Bucks are taking over early. But it's a close game. The Bucks are still up by a lot. Okay, fourth quarter, so let's slow it down. I'm going to stop it right here. I don't know. It looks over to me. We're going to jump in. Why not? But it looks over. I'll start a little bit more. I don't know. It looks like it's over. Seven points. One minute left. Let's jump in. I'm going to obviously not pick a side, right? So let's do that. Okay. Oh my God, the camera angle. I hate when the camera angle doesn't change for you. Uh, 2K camera, boom. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Uh, Clippers do have the ball, so they have a chance. But there's only a minute left. They would have to start playing amazing. Paul George is going to have to do something crazy here. There's not enough time. It's just they would have to play perfect. Like They would have to hit every shot right here. It's just not enough time. Paul McAdoo has an open under the basket and one. 
Hold on, boys. <laughs> what? Dude, Bob Maggot is going crazy. If he hits his free throw, this game's not over, bro. Don't act like you didn't foul him, Chris Middleton. Where is Kareem? Kareem's not even in. Bro, what's about to happen? He needs to hit this free throw, though. Can he hit free throw? That I'm assuming he can't. Bob McAdoo? Oh, my God. And they're in the bonus. Four-point game. 50 seconds left. They're going to have to get a stop here, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do. Why is Bob McAdoo on Chris Middleton? Oh, that's a tough shot. Does he make that? That would have been the most dirty shot in Chris Middleton. No, actually, that would have been the second dirty shot in Chris Middleton's career. Better than one in the finals. Reggie Jackson? I don't know. He had an open bucket there. Why is Preston playing? Bob McAdoo under the basket. You take it. You take it. You take it. You're going to... Three seconds. You have to take it. Why wouldn't you shoot that? Bob McAdoo, you're soft. That's why you never want to win a championship. You literally sold it. Give it to Bob. Okay. I don't know why Bob McAdoo didn't take it in the moment because then they would have had a chance for a second chance possession, but okay. Well, I don't know. They're going to need a miracle here. I don't know why Kareem's not in though. Is Kareem fouled out? Is Kareem injured? Kareem's not playing. Kareem's on the bench. Why? Maybe he fouled out. Okay, well, that's a good foul. <sighs> I don't know, man. There's not enough time. They would have to hope to God they miss a free throw and then hope to God someone hits a three. But that's not going to happen, realistically. That's backcourt. Oh, it was almost backcourt. He almost caught it and then went. So, Preston. Why is Preston on the court? They must have had someone foul out, too. Really weird. But okay. All right. Let's, let's see. Uh... Oh my god, he missed the first free throw, bro. What? Drew Holiday, no, you just didn't miss that. Damn, the graphics of this game are insane. I, I know that's random, but hold on. Man, no way you missed two. No way you missed two. Oh my god, he almost missed that. Okay. I don't know if they're going to hit a three here, boys. It, that's kind of wishful thinking. We'll see. Man, Tyron Lue? Gonna win a trying to win a championship with Bob McAdoo? I don't know if that's going to be enough. They're going to... I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. No Kareem on the court still because he's injured or, or or fouled out or something. So, can they win it without Kareem on the court? Can they hit a three? Bob McAdoo cannot shoot Reggie Jackson. They have to shoot a three. Are they just going to give it to Bob? Paul George was open for a second. He's not making that. Paul George had it for a moment and then didn't take it, bro. That's it. Unless they miss both free throws here, which is not going to happen. This is for chance. This is it. Dante DiVincenzo hit one free throw. Your NBA champions. Again. Oh, he missed the first one. Oh, my God. Why was that camera angle thing? Oh, my God. He missed the first one. No, this isn't going to happen. Man, they're choking this low-key. Make it. He's going to make it. Yeah. Oh. Bro, that's heartbreaking. That sucks. Damn. Just shoot it. You have to shoot it. He almost made that three low key. Yeah. All right, Kareem. Kareem with the Bucks win a championship. So it just kind of goes to show that, like, as long as you have a dominant player and a good roster, that, why are you celebrating, Kareem? You were on the bench, like, the whole game. But as long as you have a dominant team and a dominant player, you're probably going to win the championship. And that kind of just goes to show how that goes. So there you go. If you replace the GOAT of every NBA team, that's what would happen, right? What do you guys say? Do you agree with 2K? Leave it in the comments below. If you like the channel, please give it a sub. I'll see you guys next time.